Hey guys, it's Ashton from Ashton Warrior Props, and today we're going to be building the NCR Ranger Veteran Helmet from Fallout New Vegas. First off, this is like one of my favorite helmets and armors of all time. Uh, I put a lot of love and effort into this template, which you can find 100% for free in the link in the description. We're going to be going from start to finish through this entire armor, minus the coat, because I'm not quite equipped to set up to show you how we sewed the coat. Anywho, so go ahead, grab the template. Grab some HD foam, grab your glue, grab a chair, grab popcorn, grab a rum and coke because we're going to build this bitch. Hey, video editor here. Long time no talk. How are you? How's your mom? Anyways, Liam forgot to record the actual intro to this video. You know, the part where he takes the template that he's giving away for free and then puts it onto the foam and then cuts it out? Uh, so yeah, we're going to be jumping right into him gluing everything. That said, uh, check out the template. It's really easy to understand. All of the labels are there for what thickness of foam to cut out and whether or not it needs a 45. Go through, cut it out, then watch the tutorial. Otherwise, you're just going to be confused like I was. Blame him, not me. Talk to you soon because there's a lot more of this happening later. Cheers! So to put these darts together what I like to do is continue with that fold in half idea and kind of line the bottom edge up first to make sure you add a teeny bit of pressure so that way this next part is a little easier. Let's start at the outside edge, pull in, and you may be like oh well there's still a seam line. Um, ish. It's mostly glue you're seeing at the moment but this will save us on a lot of sanding we'll have to do here later. Another good method for darts with wider pieces like this, you can press it flat. Remember, it's foam, it's not going to hurt it. Press it flat, and so that way you know no matter what your edges are going to line up. After we've got all the darts uh, put together and all your pieces assembled, we're going to move on to the main construction of this. You know, there's several ways of doing this. It's all kind of up to, you know, what you want to do. Um, but the way I've gone about doing this is making or gluing the sides together first. Then once we glue the sides together, we'll do the front, the back, and then the strip on top. I'm just doing the side pieces real quick. Um, yeah. Remember, as you're doing this, give every piece the tug test. Really? Tug test? That's the only name you could come up with? We have, obviously, left side. And we're just going to push these together like so. Don't be discouraged. You know, I'm, I'm not really afraid to show you guys what this is going to look like currently where you can see the yellow stain of the glue. Uh, remember, nobody's foam is perfect. You'll get stuff like this and you know, it's just part of the building process. For this entire uh, construction of the bucket for the whole helmet, I'm using barge contact cement. Um, if you're more comfortable with like weld wood or whatever, uh, use it. But just in case you're wondering, the entire bucket is made or put together using uh, barge contact cement. All right, next we're going to be taking these two middle pieces, putting them together. Uh, I've cut a, lo a lot of this out, and or editor has cut a lot of this out. Don't speak for me. Next, I'm applying glue to the front, the center, and the back, because uh, those are what I'm going to be gluing next. I do like to lay out my parts in the... Uh, and about the orientation and you know reference area that they are for the main construction just to you know, kind of help keep my mind together while I'm building. There's been several times where I have uh, glued the wrong pieces together because I didn't lay them out how they should go. All right, after you've got your centerpiece uh, made, we're going to go on to the last piece, or well, second to last piece of construction. We're going to glue the sides on. And the best way to do that is uh, turn this on its side like this and run your glue along on both edges. Once your edges are tacky and you're ready to go, uh, we're going to move checkpoint to checkpoint with this. So we're going to start with bottom corner. Oh, wow, that is mm, mm, flawless. I'm going to go bottom corner up to this intersection up here. Stop at the red light. Oh, man, that feels... Mmm, Lord. Then we're going to go from that intersection down Bitter Springs Lane. Stop right there in the center, right there at Prim. And then continue down along 15 to New Vegas. And then from New Vegas, we're going to continue to Jacobstown. This, is, this down here is Jacobstown. Oh, my won't it stick? It won't stick, babes. Oh man, a lot of that feels really good, very flawless. 
Ugh, mm, that's delicious. Okay, so once your main piece is constructed and you've got it how you want and you make sure it fits, now we go into the part to make it look pretty. This part does matter because if you've got any uneven spots or you've got like hot, like big pools of glue on top, it is gonna show when we go to finish this thing. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to give it a nice uh, rounded off edge. And the best way to do that is taking your Dremel and you sand the corner and then you'll notice you have two newly created sharp angle lines. What I like to do is then take those and just go over them until they're all rounded off and there's no lines left. And you're gonna do that all the way around the helmet. And if you've got really high points, you're gonna do that there as well with your Dremel. I'm sorry, I like flung a piece of big hunk of foam right into my eye. Wear safety glasses. I'm not crying, I swear you're crying. After we've Dremeled till our heart's content, then we're going to whip out our 180 or 220 and our 180, I have some 320, there we are. Industry secret, this is what we do to make our foam pictures pretty. Uh, uh. Take you a piece of 180. I find it easier to work with smaller pieces. Some people get really agitated about that. Just rip you off a small piece. And what we're going to start with is some light sanding go over all the seam lines first. So what I'm doing is, oh, you see that already feels a million years better. So you're just gonna go over it in small circles. If you don't, if you're not comfortable doing the circular motion, what you can do is start with your, whatever this, uh, the 180 and do up and down. And then on our next pass, we will go, be going side to side. Another day over and deeper in depth, drizzle and rain. Fighting and trouble word, my middle name. I don't remember the words. Something nine cold and the straw boss said the world the best of my son. You look like a turtle. Before we put this away for now, we go on, you see how I've gone ahead and curved this? Um, I forgot cameras were not rolling. Um, so you'll notice if you go, if you've ever been to a military surplus store and you look at Vietnam era helmets or even World War II helmets, they are domed but then slightly curved out uh, like with a little lip. So to do that, what we're gonna do is use our heat gun and go around the whole edge and then a little bit on the inside there. And then we're going to take our palm kind of like a um, fulcrum almost and we're gonna take it, grip and roll back. And then about one hand space over, same story. You're gonna grip, roll back and then once more on the other side. You really don't want the lip to go past this dip. With HD foam, honestly, you don't even have to heat it. Um, it's just force of habit from doing this for a few years. Um, but there you go. So now we're gonna move on to the main mask portion. That's the very iconic piece. Uh, makes it look all scary like. Um, those are these pieces right here and these are pages right there. For starters, what we're gonna do is take top six millimeter and bottom six millimeter, uh, these two pieces right here. And for starters, you'll notice there's an orange score line on your template. What we're gonna do real quick is take a pen or pencil. Another great thing about HD foam is you can actually write on this stuff with a pencil. Oh, <laughs> oops, Ryan cut that out. All right, so Liam forgot to record how to assemble the eyepiece. Uh, it's really quickly, top and bottom are just glued together, but in the center of the eyes, it is offset slightly, so the middle part is lower. And then the two lines that you can see from left to right on the nose area are just scored and then heated up with a heat gun to open them up. Same story, you're going to want to try find a checkpoint, so we'll call this one Good Springs. So you'll start at Good Springs right there and then you'll go to Good Springs Source. After you go to Good Springs Source, you will go to Powder Ganger Camp South, and then work your way down, I think, NCR Correctional Facility? Yeah? I do play too much Fallout. Freaking love Fallout. Same story, we're going to start at Camp Golf, go down to Lake New Vegas, and then you arrive at Black Mountain. 
and then you should kind of look like spooky ghost monster mouth face. To create this kind of tiered look, um, like if you look at the mask, it, it looks like it kind of tears downward, kind of like a, like a house roof tier. Uh, the way I do this is I try to you know flatten my piece a little bit. Remember, it's foam, it's not gonna hurt it. This is the front filter outer rim. So I take my piece and I kind of start halfway and you will start find a center about three millimeters in and mark all the way around big piece now and you know same thing over here draw about three millimeters in it's easiest for me if you're using like a ballpoint pen kind of rest it on the little rubber grip and then just kind of move and if you've got a steady hand you should stay about even all the way through like so so I am applying glue to the mask section with the, uh, the bottom and the cheeks and working my way around the front filter outer rim. I, I tried to stay within my drawn line as much as possible um, with this just to make it easier when I attach them. Um, either way, if you drew your line, you'll kind of have a guiding point for how you're going to glue this. Now we're ready to attach after our glue is dried. And what I like to do is find the center point of this piece and try to match it up as best I can with a relative center. So like this, what I'll do is... So I've marked two relative centers just to kind of help guide as I go through. And slowly just kind of work your way all right, and there you've got that. So up next, we are doing this little, the front filter circle and the front filter inner rim, uh, both part A and B. I'm marking halfway through here. Now we're not going to necessarily glue halfway in. We're going to try to restrict our hand and only put glue like, you know, only on the bottom half. And the reason we want to do that is to create what looks like a little separation as if it was a filter that you'd screw in. You want a little bit of a separation so it looks like a separate piece. Honestly, and it's worth a shot if you are confident in your super gluing skills, you could probably do this part out of super glue just because you've got like a precision nozzle. So we want to create a little gap so it's like separated. So find just a random part on the circle and only glue in to like, like this, kind of like meet the edges and not too much further in. Just so match the bottom, not the top. And then kind of same story up here. And I want to meet those two. And like that, you see we've got a nice even spacing around the whole thing. So then once you're done, you know, just kind of peel away, separate a little bit. You can do it until the glue fully sets, unless you've like kind of did what I did and you mark it out. But it does create the nice illusion of a, you know, like a threaded piece. So I've marked a relative center once again. And then same story as we did before, we're creating a tiered look. So we want halfway in. And if you've marked it, it'll be a little bit easier. This piece is a little bit easier to glue uh, because it's, you know, You've got more room to grab and stuff. So we've got down to there, and we'll go ahead and do this other side. And remember, just make yourself some checkpoints as you go along. Before you connect those two, place it on your face, make sure it's gonna meet. You'll notice they're uneven because we extended a piece so that way it fits more people's faces. Um, so don't connect these until you've kind of loosely placed it on your face to make sure it's gonna fit. Just a quick reminder, at the very bottom down here, uh, it may look too short, but it's not. You're gonna wanna pull until it forms your mask a little bit. You see how we've done here? So again, just pull until it meets. And then on the bottom here, we can go ahead and glue it. Once you've done a little face test, if it needs to be extended, create a little spacer, uh, but we can go ahead and attach that. And then the main structure will be almost done. Okay, next we're gonna add these little like side panels. The face mask side. Um, so, you know, start top, meet your way to this angle. A lot of this template, when I was going over it in Blender, uh, I made it so that you have to, you have to pull it and form it, kind of like that, because that, it helps create its natural, you know, shape and structure. 
and then rinse and repeat for the other side. Okay, we are probably about, unless you don't count the wiring, we're about 50% done. We've got the main structure down. Next, we're going to move on to the details. Now that we've got the main build done, we're gonna move on to the details, starting with the pieces that are gonna need a mesh. And what do I mean by mesh? I mean like window screen, I mean like uh, you can use like some steel, uh, stereo mesh is what I've used on uh, previous builds. You can 3D print some mess, whatever, but it's the stuff that's gonna make it look like it's a filter or like a you know, something that intakes sound or outputs sound. Uh, so for starters, we take the filter cover, this little like earpiece, and this little triangle. This I'm not shapes. You don't have to do everything exact. To make this easier, actually, I'm going to cut me a little square. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is just rotate this around after I've placed my knife just to get kind of like a loose feel for what I need. And then, you know, there'll be some little trim work you'll need to do. So then we've got mesh for that. This one is a little bit easier to kind of map out because you don't really need it to fit exact. You just need it to, to go over those holes. So that you can get this window screen for like 10 bucks on Amazon or at your local hardware store. So next we're gonna move on to the filter and filter you know, accessories. Um, so for starters, you'll see this little detail that says, you know, we're the, the, this and it's got score lines. Uh, I don't know if these will show up on camera, maybe just a little bit. Uh, so what I mean by score line, and you'll remember from earlier when we did it on the mask, what's gonna happen is this. We're gonna turn on our heat gun. And you see those lines magically kind of open up and then those will fit in the little the walls of the filter like so all right so take after you've heated them and gotten the score lines to show up take your bobsmith and we'll make a little dab all the way around i'm going to take this and it may be easier for some of you to flip it over uh, to make sure these are as even as you can possibly get them. And they're just gonna tack on like that. Next we're gonna go on to the assembly of the rest of the filter. You can see I kinda already just kinda rough sanded this. You don't need to necessarily, uh, but it's, you know, you can if you want. Uh, so I'm gonna take my, you know, top of my filter and I'm going to draw a halfway point on the base, like so. This is gonna be a little bit easier this time around because we're gonna be using super glue. So try and make a little start dab. And then we're going to take this piece and line it up with the line. Again, Liam is unfortunately missing some footage here, so I'm gonna recap real quick. Uh, all you're gonna do is take that strip and go all the way around the perimeter, and then you take the back cap and glue that on the inside. There are also a couple small detail pieces that can go on top. Those are in the templates, and you'll see throughout the rest of the video, you'll see those little details, so you can reference that. Next, we're gonna move on to the front filter, and for this, we're gonna, again, we're gonna be using super glue for the most part. Um, so for starters, you'll notice again, I didn't tack the wings down and we're not gonna until we make sure everything matches. So what I'm gonna do first is find the top. The top is gonna be the widest space between the wings and we're going to place that and make sure everything is even. If all of your foam edges are even, then what we're gonna do is go ahead and you can trim them just a tad and then take our super glue and Give us a dab there and there. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take the mesh and fold it over. And that's gonna create the illusion that it is a three-dimensional mesh rather than a you know, flat piece. So you've got your mesh tightened up and ready to roll. Uh, pull over your front filter pieces and you'll notice that one is bigger than the other. Yes, it is intentional, believe it or not. <laughs> they are uneven in the game. So the uh, bigger piece is the top piece. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run us a bead of super glue. This will just make it easier to make sure it's uh, evenly placed on the front. And then once your super glue's on there, tack the wings, make sure the glue is set, give it the old tuck test. All right, after it's tacked and made sure everything is where it needs to be, 
we're gonna move on to that little center detail. And previously, I was using uh, some pre-made rivets I had done out of some two millimeter foam, and I just stacked three of them to create a six millimeter uh, raised detail. Uh, but then I remembered that HD foam has these nice, thick uh, foam dowels. And the best part about these is you know, they already come perfectly rounded. And what you can do is measure out six millimeters and it cuts just as perfectly as the rest of the line of HD foam stuff. So you can use that, or again, if you've got some pre-cut rivets like I have, you just throw it on there and then you've got your centerpiece. And then like we did on whatever, on the piece on the back of the bucket, we're going to take our stone bit and just press in like so. And then using barge contact cement, we're going to take this and make sure it's flush with E, hello. The circle should be flush with the bottom circle. Like that. Okay, moving on to assembly, we're gonna take the side filter and we're gonna create an air hose, essentially. Uh, this is gonna help keep the lenses from fogging up uh, later on down the line. So what we're gonna do for starters is take about two inches worth of a PVC pipe. I'm gonna cut that and take some, you know, just take some sandpaper and go over it all. This is not for any, like, you know, recent part or upcoming part. This is for down the road when we paint it, it's gonna help that primer uh, adhere to the PVC pipe and not just the foam. So what I'm gonna do is loosely mark out what I need to do to widen this. Once you've widened it and stuck your PVC pipe in there, um, don't let it go all the way up to the mesh because you want the air to be coming out. So you don't want it to be touching exactly. So once you've got it mounted on there, we're gonna run just a thin bead super glue around that side and take a spare piece of foam and kind of wipe it to go ahead and activate it, make it stick. And then this is going to go directly uh, into the left-hand side. So I'm gonna widen this hole out and then it's gonna go directly into there. All right, so I'm actually gonna super glue it this time just for trying something new. So I'm only gonna do one side at a time. I'm gonna place it in there so it's still got that offset, kind of like that. And you're essentially just going to rinse and repeat on the other side. All right, next we're gonna do this side ear piece. Now you can cut a hole in this if you'd like, just so you can hear a little bit better. I haven't had any noise issues when I've been wearing mine. Um, so uh, you'll notice this one also has 45s on it. Um, so what we're gonna do here is make sure it matches the filter. So that semicircle should match the filter. And then once you've got it loosely sized up, then we're going to press the 45 degree angles in and it's going to create this rounded off bulge shape uh, kind of like so next we've got the panel that holds the hoses and the wiring the uh, aesthetic wire um, so this one's a pretty simple one you just kind of match the edge up with the edge of the two millimeter foam and then you just kind of roll it out simple as that cannot get any simpler um, and then what I'm going to do is come behind right here and take my Dremel and drill those out. Next we've got this little detail piece. Because it, it's in the exact same shape as this uh, PVC pipe, I'm just going to wrap it around a little piece and, oh, God damn it. help us buy a studio mic. Then there's this secondary detail piece that's gonna go on a piece of six. So I'll take it and kind of start rolling. It's kind of like a little binding tab almost, or uh, words elude me as to what they're actually called in the automotive world. Again, once we get to the edge, I think we'll have either just enough, or if we've got more, then enough, we'll take some flush cutters to it. If we've got extra, we'll just take some sandpaper to it. Next, there's these two small rivets on mine. I don't remember if I put them in the template or not. So we're just gonna take a dab of super glue, like that, 
and just as close to center as we can on that little binding detail. Place the second on the other side. And then once that's done and ready, you are set to put that on the side covering the holes. Then I'm just gonna take some super glue and place that centered over the hole I had drilled. Um, there is another electrical or a aesthetic electrical piece that's gonna go here, uh, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. That's gonna come later. All right, so his mic fell here, so there's no audio. Do you see what I have to deal with for a work environment? Anyways, what he's doing is he's going around and making some marks for some scallops that are going to be cut out with a stone bit on the Dremel. There are four in total, and you can see he's just gonna turn it on and then just make half little divots there. Uh, just follow the video, it's relatively straightforward, and you'll be able to get them no problem. One minor detail before we move on to the last part for this section. We're going to take, I uh, have a little leather hole punch and we're gonna use the bigger, uh, the bigger punch. And we're going to stamp, twist, create five little rivets that are going to go on the detail panel. All right, and then dowel, rivet, 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 rivet. All right, and then you are all set. You've got most of the details ready to roll. And now we're gonna move on and if you're at this stage, I find it easier now to go ahead and mount the bucket. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and lightly add uh, some glue to the eyebrow of this. Remember this, try to be as precise as possible because what, this is solidifying the placement. A lot of people I've seen use magnets to let the helmet and the bucket separate or the mask and the bucket separate. I don't really like that. It's not my personal preference in my head cannon. It doesn't make sense that they would. Um, so for, this is my new personal. It looks messy because I demonstrated a lot on here just to make sure I could give you guys a perfect template. Um, so on mine, I've gotten mine to be as game accurate uh, as possible when it comes to the orientation of the bucket to the mask, uh, with just, you know, the corners of the lenses uh, poking out. Um, and I, I really like this orientation, but you pick yours if you want it like down, up, whatever. It's up to you. For starters, I'm gonna take it and kind of pinch it. Remember, this is foam, so it's not gonna hurt it. Um, and we're gonna find the center seam. It's why it's good to have a little bit of pen mark on this part. And we're going to loosely kind of dry fit it. Don't really, don't really release until you've gotten the chance to step back and hold it. And about there is where I want mine to match the others. Then now that we've got that portion sorted out, once you've got the center, the rest is easier than, um, easier than you think. I'm just gonna slowly start working my way all the way around until you've got this. All right, so now we have got the main construction done. If it ever looks uneven to you at this stage, it is literally a trick on your eyes. I've looked at this helmet God knows how many times, it may look off center, but that's because we are missing our unit over here. Now, moving into the camera, or not camera, but the flashlight and short range communication system that's gonna go on your right side, uh, you can either, if you don't really feel like delving into electronics, you can go ahead and take a crack at the templates yourself. What I'm gonna do is show you how I did mine. I wanted all of our rangers to have a flashlight and a short range communication button. So when you hold this one down, you have a short range communication, and this one, you have a flashlight. So I will show you how I wired these up into uh, my rig. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the flashlight and short range communication system on the side of the helmet. It's listed as a camera in the template. Uh, just disregard that. Um, so to start out with, uh, this is just kind of the lay of the land here. It's It looks confusing, there's a lot of parts, but it's not as bad as you might think, and we're gonna go through it step by step. Uh, just as a reminder, if you want to make it a solid piece and have no interest in making the electronic portions of it, you can easily just stack probably two sets of 10 mil or a 10 and a six together to create the depth out of one solid chunky piece rather than making it hollow. We're making it hollow here because I'm gonna show you guys how to add lights and stuff to this build. So for starters, we're gonna take our centerpiece and it's important to remember for this entire section of the build, uh, this is the uh, letter A, six millimeter. Uh, the entire portion of this build, you're going to be doing everything on the inside. So the side, 
you see you got pen marks, so flip it over. Everything's gonna get glued to the inside rim flipped over. Uh, so to start that, let's go ahead and take care of the walls. So we'll go ahead and layer. You can use super glue if you want, but just for from personal experience, it's easier with barge. Uh, so we'll take so the back piece. So we'll go ahead and add glue to the side that's going to be glued down, obviously. And on the 45 degree angles, and we will set that over to let it cure. And then the top, same story. And one thing you guys will notice, um, I'm not trying to be very flashy with how I'm doing my foam here. I want you guys to not be discouraged if you're uh, while you're building if it's uh, a little messy. In hindsight, it may have been easier to glue all the edges together and then lay it on top. Um, actually, I can go ahead and test that since this is my build and I do whatever the hell I want. Okay, so to start, we'll take our top and our, what is this, front, and we'll do the 45 to the 45 to create that nice machine edge. The A inner under is the next. We'll do the back side, the little 45 degree angle one at the bottom. All right, after you have your walls and your body, we're going to slowly work our way around, attaching the walls to the body, starting with the top. We'll do kind of what we did with the helmet, where we're gonna start at a corner, like an outer and inner edge, and then kind of roll down a little bit. Remember, if it's not incredibly perfect, uh, don't worry, because we're gonna be rounding this off. And there you've got that housing. Okay, there's also this little inner piece, the front and back cover labeled. Um, and then we've got this last inner piece, which is gonna be some two millimeter HD foam. Just right along there, make it flush with the edge. All right, now we're gonna move on to rounding it out. The best way to round this out is take a fine grit sanding drum on your rotary tool or use a stone bit on your rotary tool and go over all the edges like I had said. So I've gone through, I've done everything. I even took my stone bit and refined this little detail area down. So now I'm gonna take some 320 grit and really clean this up and refine it down to where it literally looks like it, you know, the foam does when it comes out of the roll. All right, you should have something along the lines of that when you're done. Real quick before we stop, I forgot there is this one extra detail piece which is gonna get super glued on right there. Let me make sure, yep, right there. So we will go a little bit inside of the edge and simply tack that down right where your fillet rolls over. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the big flashlight section and so for this um you first we start out with the front and once again everything is going on the inside and make sure you're putting it on the right side so that way you know you can actually fit it onto the helmet um so flip it over and because this is so uh, such a small workspace this time around i'm going to be using some bob smith super glue and then we can fit the top in once again, uh, try to make everything as flush as you can. Uh, if not, remember, we're gonna be rounding everything off. Even the base here is gonna be rounded slightly. And then we have the bottom. Unfortunately, we're missing footage again. Uh, basically, Liam just took the rest of the templates for the housing and assembled the entire thing. It's pretty straightforward. Look at the templates, look at some references, and it's relatively straightforward to assemble. It's only a few pieces and they're all pretty chunky. All right, so now that we've got the uh, main unit assembly done, we're gonna move on to the antenna. And for the antenna, it's pretty straightforward. This is a piece of tin that we've rounded off at the top, and we're gonna use a wooden dowel with uh, wrapped with two millimeter HD foam. And we are simply going to take our Bob Smith super glue, throw us a little dab right there on top, and lead that in. Once that's in place, we're going to move forward with this detail piece, which is simply going to wrap around like so to create just a little bit more uh, depth. And for this, you can either use Bob Smith or uh, Barge. And then up here at the top, we're going to start out 
You can use two or one millimeter HD foam, depending on what you have. I find it easiest to lay it flat, go slightly overboard, because then we will take some of our flush cutters and just nip like there. There will be a little bit of sanding you may have to do. Then you're going to take the top piece. There's one of these little two millimeter, I think these are at, these are about a five millimeter uh, rivet. And we're just going to top off our antenna like so. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and attach this. So I've gone ahead and I've wired this up and I'm just going to tell you all how I did this. Uh, just I don't. Uh, have the uh, setup to show you individually how I did things. So what I did uh, to create the LED light was I just took apart one of these little $3 LEDs, uh, LED flashlights, um, used the battery housing uh, here as uh, my power source. Um, I'm using the light as the, you know, the flashlight. And then I have a momentary switch up here for the uh, comm light. And so how you're going to want to do this is solder your positive wire to your positive end on your battery pack and you're going to have your ground on the ground side and there's a plus and minus to show power and ground uh, if you want a more in-depth video let me know and i'm happy to demonstrate how you will do a simple setup like this uh, now it does look messy over here but i've done that for a reason i want extra uh, wiggle room uh, with my wires so they're all measured out accordingly um, so, going there, we have our power and ground leading to this split joint, and I've done this with uh, some butt connectors. Uh, butt connectors are essentially like a uh, solder, except you uh, crimp the wires in a metal tube and then heat shrink the rest of it. Um, and then going off the left splitter, on the power wire, I go to an on-off uh, latching switch, and that will power our flashlight. Um, and ground goes to the ground source and the power goes to the power source. So essentially you're going power, follow power wire to your switch, follow the, uh, follow another power wire off the switch and to, uh, for me, the power was located on the spring. I've had some where they're located on the board and the spring is the ground. Um, so essentially that's pretty straightforward. Um, coming off the right hand split, we have our power wire going to our momentary switch, which once you hold down, it flashes red, and when you release, it is off. Um, and then coming off the, the other prong on your momentary switch, you're going to the positive end of your little uh, five millimeter LED. However, because I'm using three AAA batteries, I had to run a resistor in there, and the resistors you can get um, in a pack of like, I have a pack of 100 um, and you have to do some math to figure out how much resistance you need based on your power supply. So it's uh, then you follow your power to resistor and then to your LED and then coming off the ground end it just follows itself back to the power source. Um, it's pretty simple, it's not the most complex thing. If you'd like a more in-depth video on how to do that, I am more than happy to create that. Now to install these, we're going to take our housing here. And for starters, I will take the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the LED panel and we're going to stuff it back in here. If you need to pull off that rear panel and adjust it, do so. For this, actually, it is safer if you go ahead and take your batteries out. Just in case you click something, you don't want to throw power into it. Okay, so I've got the everything assembled and I've run my LED switches through. And um, one thing that does help, if you can find LED switches that have a nut on them, like a threaded nut, it does help secure them in place without needing glue. Um, on the back side, you can see here, it's kind of it's kind of a mess. I've done better work than this, but I kind of was in a hurry here. Um, so I've run my wires and organized them how I see fit to give me enough room to be able to pop this in and out. On the inside of the mask is where you'll, the hole for this is going to go. I've also tacked down my wires with zip ties and gaffers tape. It just helps hold them so they're not jumbling around and they're making a lot of noise. Um, 
And then back out here, the only thing I've done different is I've taken a 15 and a 10 millimeter foam rivet that I've made and just punched a hole through the center to add this little detail piece for the com light. Um, other than that, this part is just about done. We've got a few bits and details we've got to add, uh, some decorative rivets, and then our antenna, and the lip around this lens, and then we're good to go. I cut out a little right angle dowel, and we're going to use this as the lip for our light. I'm use the flat side as my piece that's going to go around the housing, and it should go on a little like that. So now we're ready to attach everything, um, and then we're gonna go into the finer details, and then we will be done with this. Um, so, for starters, we're gonna hold it up. It should meet the edge of the base of the thing, should meet with this seam here leading up into the dome. Now, in the back, the reason, again, this is longer in the template is because you need to trim based on your head size. I've already test fitted this. I know exactly how it needs to go. So the little wall back in here, I'm going to mark off where it meets the, where it meets the dome, uh, as well as I'm going to take my pen and mark off where about everything sets just so that way there's not a boatload of glue stains and stuff. So once I've marked that, I'll find where I marked on this wall. And again, some of these pieces I'm telling you to adjust yourself is just sizing issues. Um, same story right here in the back where there's an open gap. If your head is a little bit bigger, you're going to need to adjust that. But anywho, once you've got your pieces trimmed and your place set, there's two things else we're going to need to trim before we mount the unit to the headspace. Uh, you'll have to rough guess where about your, and honestly if you flip your helmet inside out and kind of poke, you can kind of feel where your battery pack is. And we can draw a little rectangle here and we're going to cut out an opening for our battery pack so we can take it in and out at our leisure. All I'm doing now is applying a good layer of glue on the bucket and the walls of the unit itself. Once your glue is set, we're going to follow suit with our placement and we're just going to tack, put a decent amount of pressure on it, just make sure it actually attaches to where it needs to. And back there, press firmly up against the bucket to make sure get it where it needs to go all right and then give every little space a good tug test um, just to make sure everything's working and there we have it and okay so now we're gonna move on to the details starting with this electrical hose um, a lot of some of this is artist interpretation some of this is just how it is on some of the posters uh, because again in game this little section does not exist but I'm doing a mix of in game and posters um, so for starters I take some 10 millimeter HD foam round dowel and wrap it with some 2 millimeter details and a rivet and then it's simply going to pretend plug back there so we'll draw us a little glue circle and plug it in and then already like just adding something so simple like that brings this thing to life all right last time you are hearing my voice in this video liam's just taking the edge of a dremel sanding bit and using that to make some nice lovely gouges in this helmet. There is no specific way to do this. Just do it the way that you feel best. Liam will talk a moment about telling the story of your character, and that is very, very, very true. Just put scratches where you feel it works and wear the story of your helmet and character suits. It's important, especially when you're doing an outfit like this, this is your character. This is not a specific ranger. This is your character. Um, so play your damage into your character. Give your character a backstory while you're damaging it. Um, so that's what I kind of did here. I've got big three claw marks, you know, just gashed it, took the dude's helmet off while he was wearing it. You know, anywho. So now we're going to go into dents and divots. Dents and divots are easily achieved with the uh, conical stone bit. Um, and I'm going to show you real quick how we're going to do that. So to do these, you're going to find a place where you want your dent. Um, so say you want to do over here in your corner, you're essentially going to want to start 
and then dig in and then just kind of hammer around a little bit. Uh, don't be afraid to, you know, make it look like it's been dinged, it's metal, it's been punched, it's been butted with a hammer and just find some places to put some little dents. Now that we're done, damaged, dented and built, uh, the last piece is literally some three quarter inch corrugated split tube and that is simply going to plug right there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with this build. Um, up next, of course, is painting, um, which will be uh, released uh, ASAFNP. This is such a great prop. I've built tons of them. They are incredibly fun to make. They're incredibly, they're, they're a good challenge. They're a great median between beginner, middle, and pro, honestly, because you can start out, get the shapes a little bit wrong, and then try again in a few months, and it'll always be different. That's one thing I love about the Rangers. But this one here, we have a movie quality prop at 100% game and poster accuracy. Um, now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, well, again, one last thing. You may be thinking to yourself, hey, Ashen, it looks like it's more fitted. How do I fit it on my big dome? Well, that's easy. It's like uh, like if you've ordered a clone trooper helmet kit or anything, you're going to, I'll take this off just for now. You're going to start by putting it on your eyebrow and just kind of rolling it back. And if it looks big now, what we're gonna do in the painting video, it may look big on you, um, it's not. So what we're gonna do later on in the painting video is stuff this with some acoustic foam uh, to give it some nice padding. Uh, but anyway, I guess that's gonna do it for this build. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. This is a great build, fun build. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Go follow the Instagram and Facebook. Join the Facebook group. Show us what you're doing. If you use the templates we did for this, or you like the video, show me on Instagram, send me a picture. I'd love to see. Uh, if you want to help support out the page in any way possible, we've got a PayPal, we have a Patreon that I need to get better about using, and you can also find a link to a Teespring where you can find some pretty badass shirts, like, if you're a maker of cool shit, get your shirt and tell the world that you're a maker of cool shit. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so very much. I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. Thanks again. See ya.